Hi everyone, welcome to Basic Science Series. I'm your host Lokendra Kumar and today as you can see we will be discussing one of the important topic of uh, parasitology which is sources of infection. We will discuss humans, we will discuss animals, vectors, contaminated soil and water, contaminated food sources, specifically meat products. We will discuss what are the parasites that are present in these different sources and why they are important, what kind of disease they can cause all of that in this particular video lecture. So without any delay, let's start the video. So I'll start with the topic which is sources of infection and the main category of this particular topic is basically parasitology. So I have made few videos earlier and now I'm taking a lead on parasitology and making a lot of different types of videos where we will discuss the parasites in more detail. Now sources of infections. When we talk about sources of infections means these are the reservoirs where parasite is going to get transmitted from. The first one is humans. In case of humans there are uh, many important parasites that can be transmitted. So I can say the first point which is the many major parasites they can be transmitted. Example is one of the example is uh, Entmoeba histolytica. Giardia is another example. So second point is what are, what are the diseases, parasitic diseases that can be caused by humans and they can be sourced. One is amoebiosis. I've already told you the causative agent for that and theropiosis is another one. Then if the infection is transmitted from one human to another one, we can call it as an anthro an anthropronosis is the word for that. So if the infection, parasitic infection or a disease that can be transmitted from or that is getting transmitted from human to human, we can call it as a anthropronosis. Second one, animals. Whenever animals come into the picture, we use the word zoo. So this is my diagrammatic representation for the animal. I hope uh, you can relate it. It's, it's not that nice, but I hope you can understand the schematic. Uh, now, in case of animals, if the infection is coming from animal, we can call it as a zoonosis or zoonotic infection. So if the infection is coming from animals to humans, the disease is zoonosis. The infection is uh, called as zoonotic infection. We, we have certain examples. I'll take the example of dogs and cats. They can become the sources of infection of uh, important disease such as echinococcus granulosis. This is the causative uh, organism, uh, echinococcus granulosis, and the disease is echinococcosis. That's the dog is the uh, source of the infection. Toxoplasmosis is the another disease where cats are the sources of infection and they are pets. So you need to be better, uh, you need to be very, very careful uh, with pets. They, they must be thoroughly cleaned if you are handling them and they are close to your food sources, you have to be very, very careful. Now, vectors, if we talk about vectors, uh, they, they belong to the phylum arthropoda and this is the diagrammatic representation of the bug, but I, I, it's not that nice, but I hope you can relate it with that. So, arthropods are the vectors that can transmit the infection to humans. And then human to human infection is also mm, uh, transmitted by these bugs. So they are very important, especially in case of uh, parasite and the life, completing the life cycle of the parasite. Fourth important source of infection is contaminated soil and water. Definitely soil can become a reservoir for many different types of materials, especially the human feces. And it is if it is contaminated with human fecal matter, definitely parasites are going to be there especially the cyst form of those parasites because it can it can survive in drastic environmental conditions so if we talk about the soil you can soil can be polluted with human excretory material and you can have hookworm you can have ascaris and uh, you can have uh, if the water is contaminated you can have ant and amoeba histolytica another important organism so let me write it down water contaminated with ant amoeba histolytica can cause amoebiosis water contaminated with giardia can cause giardiasis so there are these important parasitic infections you need to be very very careful of when when it comes to the contaminated soil and water next contaminated food sources 
So there are certain types of food, especially the meat products. They can be contaminated with cysticercus parasite. So you have to be very, very careful while you are cooking the food. You can have cysticercus parasite in the meat product and, and other. There are many parasites that can live on meat products, on the vegetables. So you have to be very, very careful while you are cleaning and eating your vegetables. So I hope in this video, uh, I have tried to cover the sources of infections and uh, it is understandable to you. We have discussed humans, animals, vectors, contaminated soil and water, contaminated food sources. In food sources, we have discussed the meat products and cysticercus parasite is one of the important parasite. In case of soil and water, we have hookworm ascaris, entamoeba histolytica, giardia. In case of vectors, there are, you know that, mosquitoes. And then example of those parasites we have already discussed in our previous videos. Animals, we discussed about the zoonotic infections or zoonosis, echinococcus and Echinococcus is the parasite, echinococcosis is the disease, toxoplasmosis is the disease by cats. And then we have also discussed some of the infections caused by humans, especially hemobiasis and enterobiosis. So these are some of the important examples you have to be very, very careful of. And uh, we have, you have to uh, be very, very specifically, very, very careful of the contaminated uh, sources like contaminated soil and water, contaminated food sources. And especially you have to be very, very careful while you are close to the animals and uh, the pets. All right, so that was all in this video. I hope now you understand about the sources of infection and why they are important. What are the different examples specifically focusing on the parasites? I will meet you in my next video where we will discuss more such topics of the parasitology. Till then, take care.